fantasymedia.com. Hi guys, welcome to Four Steps to Better Portrait Photography. My name is Mark and today I'm going to be covering four simple steps that I have taken to improve my portrait photography. Now, number one is equipment. Um, obviously, we know the saying goes, it's not the gear, it's the photographer. <laughs> and there's so much truth to that, but gear can help you. Um, I used to shoot on a crop sensor lens, on a crop sensor camera, sorry. And I've recently upgraded to a full frame camera. Now the difference between that is that a crop sensor is basically a slightly smaller sensor and a full frame is a larger sensor. Now the difference is not massive, uh, but there is a certain magic, excuse me, when you're shooting full frame um, it just gives you an extra dimension to your image um, there's a little bit more space as well because it doesn't crop in uh, hence the word crop sensor means it's cropped whereas full frame means it's the, the image the way it's in, intended to be um, so it, it just gives an extra dynamic to your picture which um, um, is, is quite magical when it comes to portrait photography in particular. Now, in terms of a flash gun, I was using a Goldox flash, I had a Goldox trigger, um, and these things are important to have a good flash. Obviously, it's a studio setting where we, we did this shoot, so we needed artificial light, we couldn't rely on natural light. It was also late at night as well, where there was no natural light anyway. Um, so that's where, you know, obviously equipment comes in handy. Now, the second step is lighting. So they go hand in hand, these two, I, I feel. Um, basically lighting again i'll go back to what i was using in terms of my flash gun i used a, a godox flash and that flash was in a beauty dish and the way we set it up was so that the beauty dish was kind of over Ray's head so it was kind of pointing down but also there was a little bit of a, a slight tilt to it as well so it, it would capture her face as well so and then underneath uh, we also had a reflector and I used the golden side of the reflector and I used that to give an extra kick of light to, to flash back at Ray so it goes so there's light coming from two different angles so basically you've got light coming from here you've also got light coming off the reflector and coming straight at your subject in, in that way and it just it just gives a more fuller um, image in terms of lighting it's more complete uh, that golden reflector also gives it more of a natural tone and also it matches her skin tone as well because she's she's quite fair skinned so it kind of complemented that golden tone so it gave a nice a nice warm feeling to the image which which worked really well um, now as well as that I used a light meter for all my settings um, I find that light meters are extremely useful um, they, 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 they give you that, that right, um, the right camera setting straight away you don't have to worry about it um, you just put the light meter to the subject's face you pull the flash it gives you a reading you dial it into your camera now the settings that I was using I used an f8 uh, F8 aperture. Now, this is particularly good for portrait photography because um, it just uh, keeps everything in focus. Um, obviously, a blurred background is nice to have, but it's not so much suited when when you're in a studio environment. When you're in a studio, you kind of want everything that you see to be in perfect focus. You want it to have that nice crisp. Um, crisp look to the to the image and f8 is that magical number really it just gives you that 
just the amount of, 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 of focus and, and depth of field so that you get that nice, nice touch to the image so you can see everything clearly and everything looks full, but it's not so high in aperture that, you know, you can't provide the light for it. So obviously the higher your aperture in terms of numbers, so we go from one, two, three, four, five, six, obviously the higher in aperture, the smaller, the lens hole is so that means that the less light coming into the camera and in particular aperture relates to the flash um, because it relates to the artificial light because that's the way the the artificial light comes in is through a flash gun um, whereas the shutter speed controls more of natural light because it's, it deals with the time which the lens is open for and receives the, the light. Um, so, you know, those things really help. Obviously, you don't have to have a light meter. You can figure it out. You know, um, you just take a couple of test images and, and play with the aperture, play with the shutter speed until you get a good, a good uh, blend. Um, obviously, making sure that your shutter speed is high enough so you can still hold your camera depending on whether you're holding it or it's on a tripod. If it's on a tripod, you ain't got to worry so much. But if, it, if you're holding the camera, you need to make sure that the camera has a, um, has a high enough shutter speed so you can still hold it and take pictures at the same time. Uh, these things are important. Okay, so third tip is posing. Now, posing is an interesting topic. Um, people have different styles and uh, it's, it's very unique to the individual, the person who's taking the picture. And it's unique to the type of feeling you want to communicate. But when you take a picture, you want people to feel something. Um, you want people to feel what you're trying to portray. It's very much like a composer composes music you know you want the music to put that person in a certain mode a certain feel and um, posing is a big part of that so the way you pose your model will determine what people think when they look at the picture now obviously you know when a model is posing and say you're taking just waist up pictures um, there's only so far you can go with just face turning the head you're going to have to start using arms and hands and, and things like that and people get awkward with arms and hands and they don't really know where to put them if they're not an experienced model so a lot of that is about confidence um, and and it's part of my fourth step if I'm being honest so my fourth step is is to have fun and to be confident and that goes hand in hand with posing so the more fun you have the more relaxed your model is the more you try things the more confidence you have it's a it's a flow it's a it's a circle um and uh, that's that's the great thing and the main thing when you go out there when you're in the studio or you're outdoors taking pictures is that you want to have fun with with whatever you're doing so i tend to bring music with me play music make sure it's music that the model likes so she feels comfortable to her favorite music and you know you just make it a really nice occasion and and it's only it's always when you're having a good time that the best things tend to happen when you're most relaxed that's when the stroke of genius happens so it's very important to set the mood right of of having fun enjoying yourself this is great this is photography you know this is a creative it's an artistic um, activity let's enjoy it you know um, so when I pose going back to step three um, basically I tend to um, use hands a lot so I'll use my hands on the model I tell the model to touch her face gently softly not not gripping too much but maybe just gently softly and, and and let them also as well add their own edge to what they're doing and then and then obviously you want to be giving compliments as well which goes back to step four having fun confidence so you want to be encouraging your model and at the same time you want to be 
telling her when to where to pose giving her direction maybe not telling her everything she needs to do but just that little bit of direction well, why not try this why not try that and obviously the more experienced models some models they know exactly how to pose anyway so they'll, they'll just be like from the off so it just depends on on who you're working with and what the situation is but with posing it's good to use hands it, it creates a nice feeling because you don't want all your pictures to look the same just a headshot you can have some of them as well they're great um, but you also want some shots that are more um, emotional a little bit more feeling to it and, and a little bit more creative so yeah experiment with it um, you know use hands I tend to say touch the face and then I'll have her other hand or his oh no obviously not him her for, for these kind of uh, uh, pictures so I'd have that I'd have her touch her elbow or maybe touch um, the side of her arm or something like that something soft something you know that that, that looks inviting that looks you know dynamic and, 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 and interesting you know something that captures people's attention you know and that's what photography is about you know it's making a statement it's making a point it's conveying emotion so just have fun with it um, so however you take your pictures don't worry too much about gear and equipment I know I've covered it it does have its role but most importantly even if you're going out with your phone taking pictures you can still create some great images it's it's not about the gear it's about how the feeling and what you're trying to convey you could use natural light you don't necessarily need all these things like beauty dishes and 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 led lights and and and, and reflectors you can be creative you can use the natural light and go out and, and create great images just just by yourself so the idea of this video is to encourage also people that are not professional but just want to take better images um you know is to give you some advice as well thank you so much for watching all the way through um obviously if you have any ideas for future videos or you want advice on a particular area of photography or video then please let me know and i'll i'll create a video for you or i'll just write a response to you in the comments leave a comment like the video or dislike it if you didn't like it and also subscribe um, if you haven't already that way you stay in tune with what we're doing and uh, remember to turn the notifications on so that you can obviously um, know when we're about to do a new video or a new video is just dropped then uh, you will know about it straight away now I wanted to leave you with um, a slideshow of the pictures that I took so you can see what we came up with and, and it was an amazing shoot so um, yeah just wanted to show you some images thank you very much see you soon